In this video, you're gonna see the inside of a Billie Eilish production that Phineas produced. And what's even better is that if you own Logic Pro, you can also see inside the production since it comes with Logic Pro as a production you can learn from. And no, this is not me advertising for Logic, by the way. Something I talk about extensively is how so many home studio producers think they need all this fancy stuff or plugins or mixing tricks or any number of just ridiculous things to make really great sounding music. And in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at a song that has over 850 million streams and how it's actually significantly more simple than you think, and it still sounds awesome. I mean, Phineas is like an eight time Grammy award winning producer. So I'm going to be breaking down this production that Phineas did on Ocean Eyes. I'm going to show you some really key takeaways that you can use in your own productions. Let's do it. All right. So this is what the actual session looks like. And the very first thing that I noticed when I look at this is like, there's not as much going on here as you think. There's only 44 tracks in total. And that's including uh, all the vocal layers that they've got. They've got vocal stacks here. I'm about to open this up because he did actually collapse these down into uh, track stacks. I mean, track stacks. So if we were to actually open this whole thing up, here's some vocal stacks. Here's the vocal textures, which we're going to be taking a look at all this stuff. We got all the percussion down here. And so this is what it actually looks like when you kind of open everything up. And as you can see, pretty much all of this stuff right here, this is all vocals. And then all the rest of that is the rest, which is not a lot. So I'm going to collapse these back again. And what I want to do is focus mostly on the instrumental production. We're not going to be taking a look at so many of the plugins and mixing things that they did. What I really want to focus on is the actual production itself. Like how is this actually produced from a musical standpoint? And when you look at this, let's just go to the chorus, for example. If we were to mute out all these vocals and just play the instrumental. Just listen to this. I mean, this is this is not complicated stuff. It's very very simple. But when you throw these vocals in. I mean, it sounds nice, it sounds rich. There's so much space for all this stuff to happen. The vocals sit very nicely on the top. So if we just take a look at these two instruments right here, this is pretty much the core of the actual chords that are happening. He's got this, it's named Custom Soft Piano, and it sounds like this. So very, very simple. He layered that with this dark pad. It's the exact same thing. And honestly, to me, and this is not a critique on Phineas, because like, honestly, this, this production sounds great. But when you solo these instruments out, they're not, there's nothing crazy. There's nothing fancy about this. It, there's absolutely nothing fancy about this. This, this little soft piano sound right here. It's like, for me as a pianist, I'm kind of almost like, really? Like, that's it. But again, in the context of this whole thing, it sounds great. And then he uses all these different layers here. These are just kind of like more ethereal sounds. And so if we kind of play these out, pan these left and right, it sounds like this. Here's just the Moonlight Arc. String Vox. And uh, that, that's, that's it. And then he uses these little elements here that just are kind of nice little just ear candy kind of things. Little vocal thing. It's kind of cool because what he's really doing is having this little interaction between these two things, right? Like there's the dun 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 dun, bum 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 bum. bum. And so there's this kind of this call and response thing, but they're two different sounds, which I th I think it's really smart. And so when we listen in context here, if we just take these out, I just want to show you how much of a difference this actually makes. So here's just the whole instrumental without those little elements. This is this sounds fine, but now watch this. I mean, it just adds this nice little element to it. And again, it's so simple. It's literally four tracks. Two of these are doing basically the same thing, just two different sounds in their pan to kind of give you a little bit of extra width on it. And these little elements in here, are just these little, again, call and response type things going on. And these vocal textures here, they're doing the same chord progression, but instead of going dun, 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 they're going da da da, which is really cool because if you think about it, it's, it's doing this kind of contrary motion, which if you know anything about like music theory and how music theory and voice leading works, contrary motion is a very good thing because it allows things to kind of work against each other a little bit. So the pianos, da, 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 right? And if you kind of like reverse that, it's like, da, da, da. that's what they do with the vocal here. Really smart. And again, it's, it's just so simple. So if we actually look at what they did on the recording side here, uh, they just literally have like 12 vocal layers. Yep. So four layers of that one top thing. Okay. I'm going to assume four layers of the other one.
Yep, and then four layers of the other. So it's four layers of each. You can see they're panned all over the place, and that's going to help you give more of that width on it. And then the rest of it is pretty much just the drums, like which again is it's not complicated. He's just using this little African kit. He just dropped these sounds into the sampler here. <laughs> I mean, honestly, like. <laughs> that doesn't even sound that great. Like, it really doesn't sound very good when you solo that out. And then he's got these other sounds here with the kick and snare sound. And these are working together. And all of a sudden now, they sound really good. You take out that African kit. Put it back in. Take out the modern machines. So that little, that almost like the kick, if you will, it's got like no low end on it. It's just got a little bit of top end. So this like modern machine instrument is what has the low end on that kick. But then if you just listen to the modern machine, that snare or like almost like rim sound has absolutely no tail. Pop, pop. So you get more of that tail off of the African kit, like the that reverb. So it kind of splashes it out. So smart layering. And this is such a good little trick here for just producers in general. He's finding things that, you know, one sound lacks, which is like, hey, this rim doesn't have any tail. It's just very, it's just a hit and then done. But then that African kit is going to have the kind of reverby tail on it, right? And so then it's like, oh, okay, this this low hit on the African kit, it doesn't have that bottom end that you want from a kick. Okay, so let's find the bottom end kick that can complement that sound. So again, these are smart decisions that he's making. And then he's got this little clap in here as well. And he's doing it every other time. So just, again, it keeps it interesting. Little, little tiny little bits that just keep things interesting throughout the whole thing. And if we look at the last part of this drums here, it's gets this fizzy beats. <laughs> I love the names of these, by the way. This is like, what should I call it? Fizzy beats. Uh, this is kind of what this sounds like. It's like, you know, but again, like listen to the context here. It actually sounds really cool. It's, just, it's cool. Like that, that really works. Again, in isolation, it's kind of like, meh. and I think this is hopefully just going to show you that like the isolation of things doesn't matter. The context is what matters. The context is what matters. You can hardly hear that. <laughs> Little boop, boop, boop. And then he's kind of almost got this like hi hat topper type thing. I think this is actually pretty smart processing, by the way. So if you look at what he did on this hi-hat itself, let's just listen to what this sounds like on its own with absolutely no effects. What? It's like, it's like, the, it's like the most like simple hi-hat sound you could possibly find. It's like, yeah, that works. And then he's like, how can we take this and make it more interesting? And this is, again, this is very, very smart because he's taking something and then saying, how can I just manipulate this, you know, a little bit to kind of make it sound more interesting? So he's got this phase. Not doing a ton. Okay, he's got this auto filter. This is where you start getting that. He puts another one on here. I'm curious to see how these are kind of working together. Okay, and that's why he added the game plug in here. He added a game plug in to, to basically bring the volume back up because it really brought it down. Interesting. And like literally, apart from vocals, that's it. Like, do you get that? Like that, that's it. Like this production is very, very simple. And there's so much space and so much room for these vocals. I do want to talk about vocals for a second, because there are a couple of things I think that are really interesting to look at when it comes to the vocals. And again, this is where it's like, we can get all, you know, nitpicky and stuff. It's easy to look at something like this. And, and even for me, like my workflow is so different. Like I look at this and I'm like, why did he do certain things the way he did it? Like, why would you do it that way? That doesn't make any sense. Who cares? And this is the beauty of it. And I think this is where as producers, as a producer community, we need to start realizing that there's like a hundred ways of doing the same thing. And at the end of the day, the end result is the only thing that matters. So what I'm talking about here is he left his vocals, his lead vocals as comps. Like he, he didn't actually flatten these. So like if this was me and I was the one working on this production, I would go in here, I would comp the vocals. Okay. So he's got all the vocals comped. That's great. I, I think it's even like looking at this, I'm like, why, do, why don't you just like get rid of those lines? Like, why do you need that there? <laughs> why is there like this here? Listen. Let those up. 
Like, why not just do that? Like, so there's so many little things in here on the vocal comp that's like, why? Like, I don't, I don't really get it. Oh, I don't know. But again, it's like, who really cares? So if this was me and I was doing this, and again, who am I, right? I don't have eight Grammys, whatever. But just, again, what I would do is I'd be going in here, I'm creating a track alternative. I'd be duplicating this and then calling this the edits or whatever. And then I would join all these. And then I'll go like this. I will go and I'll flatten everything. And then I'll go and I will add crossfades like this right here. What the heck do we need that for? We don't need that for. Now I'll kind of shave this off. Maybe add a little cross, add, not crossfades. I just like fades here. Can't stop. But right here, I'd add a crossfade. Ocean. Yeah, I had a little crossfade there. Ocean, I... That's just going to prevent any po potential pops and clicks. I had one there. And that's what, that's what I'd be doing. And like this. What? Why, why, why not just retain the actual performance? Oh, I see why. Interesting. So he, he didn't want it to be as long. It was more connected. So here's what you would do. I would go in here and I would add a crossfade. Make a little bit of a longer crossfade. Now you can't hear it at all. Again, does it matter? Like in the grand scheme of things, it is what it is. But like, uh, there's this like funny little things like this that I, I'm like, why, why wouldn't you do that? <laughs> it's kind of interesting. And like looking at the vocal stack, same thing. Like he's got all this stuff here and this comp is not even flattened or anything like that. And it doesn't matter. Like, again, the final outcome is the only thing that matters. Uh, one thing I want to point out here, I think is really cool is that this little ghostly vocal thing here at this point. So what I actually did off camera was I created a duplicate of this. I bounced it down to audio. And then what you can do is you can actually re-reverse it so because you, you actually, the way that they had done this, you actually can't reverse it. But this is literally just the chorus. No it, it's just the chorus and then they just reversed it. And then and they actually printed this down with effects, which again is, I think, I think pretty intelligent. So that way you get the tail of those that kind of swell in and everything like that. But even looking at, at some of the things here, like you can hear mic bleed on this, like uh, different parts in here. When I was looking through this uh, before filming, like right in here, if we were just to solo out this vocal stack, listen to this. No. You can hear all that mic bleed. And so again, doesn't matter, right? Like it is what it is. It still sounds awesome. But like what I would do, like I would just jump in here and was like, cut all that crap out. Like, why do you need that? No. So when it's all said and done, I think it's really easy when we're watching videos that other people are putting out there and you might see things like this where why did you do it that way? And then we get all critical about it. But in the grand scheme of things, does anyone care? Does the 850 million people that listen to this song care? Of course they don't care. It doesn't matter in the slightest. The, really the big takeaway for me on anything like this is that the song is the thing that the audiences connect to. And what we as producers need to be doing is making decisions and choices that are going to support that song. This particular production, as many of you may be thinking it doesn't really require anything super crazy or super nuts there's not like anything massive going on in here but these choices are very intelligent choices i think it'd be very easy for producers to take a song like this and if all you had was the vocal it'd be very easy to go in here and overproduce this song and it would not sound nearly as good as what phineas did on this so i don't know in the case that phineas is watching this video really well done like honestly i think this production sounds great such a good use of complementing sounds with each other especially in the percussion side really well done but you know my only thing would be you know it's maybe like clean up the vocals a little bit but uh apart from that you know again who am i to say anything just you know just my two cents we'll see you in the next video